Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to Rich Reviews and welcome to a glorious day sunshine in the UK. So today I'm going to talk to you about the must-have buys once you've purchased your supercar. Now I get a lot of questions from people, a lot of comments asking about certain specific items, what to buy for your phone mount, what to buy for detailing the car, etc, etc. So this video is in effect going to encapsulate all those items that people ask me about all into one video so we can cover it all off in one go. So the first item I'm going to talk to you about is the battery conditioner. So, okay, first of all, you're going to think, okay, well, why do I need a battery conditioner? The 458 comes with a battery conditioner. Well, yeah, it does. It comes with a Ferrari branded battery conditioner. Now, those Ferrari branded battery conditioners are actually rebranded CTEX. CTEX make pretty much the definitive battery conditioner for Ferraris and for most cars, to be honest. So, the, the actual model of the battery conditioner that comes with the 458 is called the CTEC 260123. Now, I believe that's been de discontinued because the later models of 458, or some models of 458, I should, I should say, come with a different version. Mine's a 2015, so you'd think it would come with a latest edition, but for some reason, other 458 models come with a later edition of a, of a rebadged C-Tech. Now, the item that we have, I found one behind my wheel arch here earlier. <laughs> so, with the car, you'll get... This, as I say, it's a C-Tech 260123 rebadged. Obviously, it's got Ferrari branding all over it. And this is the item that you'll get standard with your car, or you should get standard with your car. So you may be lucky enough to get a later variant, but this is commonly the standard version that's delivered with the 458. And this comes in this package. So it's just a Velcro package. And usually it's situated within the car cover bag that you get with the item. So this is usually packaged within this, within this Velcro bag. Obviously it's blatantly red, good old Ferrari, <laughs> and is situated in your car cover bag. So what's the problem with this unit? Well, it's the C-Tech 260123 was a cheap unit. It wasn't one of their top items. Um, pretty much Ferrari skimping on money a little bit there, um, saving money a little bit there. Um, not buying the best C-Tech or not using the, the, the best model C-Tech that was available at the time. And definitely this is, this is not a great battery conditioner if you want to really keep your battery optimally conditioned. Now, if your battery is in very good condition, say you've got a fairly new battery and you're using this battery conditioner, most of the time you'll be okay because this will keep it topped up. But if your battery drops to a very low state or if it actually goes totally flat, this is not going to recover it. This is not going to bring it back up to a good, to a good state. Pretty much be in a situation where you'll have to either buy a new battery or get a better quality battery conditioner. So the item that I recommend, I rec first of all, I recommend you keeping this item. You should never get rid of any original Ferrari OEM kit because it always should be sold back with a car because that's what buying a Ferrari is like. You, people who buy Ferraris always look for the original OEM kit because it keeps the value with the car. So you should never get rid of this. You should never sell it. You should still keep it. But the item I recommend is the CTEC MXS 5.0, and that's this item. Now, this is a far superior battery conditioner. This battery conditioner goes through many, many different states and analysis states. And some of those states are analysis. So when you plug this into you, into, when you connect this up to your battery, first of all, and you switch it on, this does an analysis of the condition of your battery and it's, it's um, 
it goes through certain states depending on what condition your battery is in. So if it needs what's called a battery recondition, it will go through a recondition state and it will actually do some remedial work on your battery plates. Now you've got lead acid plate. In these, in these normal batteries, AGM batteries, you've got lead acid plates and you've got acid within, with, within the compartment, um, which aids in the, the delivery of, inf of, um, of uh, juice in effect from one, one node to the other. So um, commonly from the negative to the positive. These perform an analysis of your battery very efficiently and are very good quality battery conditioners. When I first bought my 458, the battery wasn't in too good a state. I was using the original battery conditioner and yeah, it did work and it kept it topped up to a certain level, but there was still, there was issues where the battery wasn't quite as, as, as good as it could have been. Um, I changed over to the MXS5 and I've never had any issues since. So this is definitely the correct battery charger to get. The standard MXS5 comes like this. So the cable is pretty short. You'll notice that the standard battery conditioner comes with the connector that fits in to the socket within the passenger compartment of the car. So there's a socket within the passenger compartment where this plug um, locates and fits into, and it's, it's nice and tidy, um, plugs into your car, and you can start charging your car without using any crocodile clips to connect specifically across your battery. Now, when you buy the MXS5, you do get some terminals that you can connect that locate directly onto the battery, but I'm sure most of you guys don't want to be doing that. You'd rather use the similar item that you get with the standard battery conditioner. Now, I wouldn't recommend cutting the item off here. As I said, you want to keep your OEM kit as is to sell on with the car. If you sell the car on going for the future, it keeps the value for the car. So you need to be able to purchase an item like this that fits in to this connector. I think they call it the soft connector or easy fit connector. You want to be able to purchase an item that connects with this, with this connector. Now, they, there is a company on eBay that provides those. They create them bespoke for the Ferraris. Um, I, fit the, I think they fit the California and the 458. And that item is this. So this is an interface between the MXS5 cabling and the Ferrari 458. So as you can see here, you've got the standard plug that connects into the passenger compartment socket. So as you can carry on charging your car in the same manner as you would as though you're using the standard OEM battery conditioner. This just plugs in, simple as anything, into the plugs like so. And then you just plug this into your, into your passenger compartment socket. Now this one in addition also has some LED lights on it. So these LED lights, let me just find out where they are here show you the battery condition. So these different LEDs show red, amber, and green with respect to the battery condition. So depending on the state of your battery, this will show you the actual condition of the battery as it charges as well. In addition to, of course, the LED lights on the battery conditioner itself. That may sort you out with regards to being the replacement for your, your original OEM battery conditioner. But as you can see, that isn't very long. Now I have my MXS5 screwed onto the wall and it's quite a distance away so that I can easily see it and it's quite a distance away from being plugged into the actual car. So it's quite a distance away from the, from the socket in the car. So how do you overcome that? You overcome that by judiciously using CTEC extension leads. I only use one CTEC extension lead because that's long enough for me. This is circa three meters long and it's pretty much the standard CTEC extension lead that you can buy. Some people buy two of these, some people buy three of them. I only needed one. So I would recommend you buying at least one of these extension leads. So there you've got three items you need to buy. The MXS5 actual battery conditioner, the actual MXS5 interface to the 458 charging socket, and the, M and, and the CTEC extension lead. So those three items make up your charging solution going forward if you want to use a better quality battery conditioner. I say this is just my recommendation, but this is really a recommendation of most supercar owners. Now, regular viewers of my channel will know about this second one. It's the Carbonio number plate bracket. So this item, there's a full blown video um, review of this Carbonio number plate bracket system on my channel. So I'm gonna ask you to reference that video because that gives you full details about this Carbonio number plate bracket system. In effect, it's the de facto approach um, in my opinion, to easily implementing a number plate or easily installing or connecting a number plate to the front of a 458 and to most supercars, to be honest, especially if they're designed in this way. It's very easy, literally just put it to the back, bring it forward, that's it, it's attached. 
nice and easy so you can you can install the carbonio number plate bracket system to your car when you want to use the car when you're stopped say at a car show and you want to show the car off but you don't want the the number plate to be on the front of the car because it maybe ruins the lines a little bit law unfortunately in the uk then you can easily disconnect it put it in the front of the car easily easily connects easily disconnect say nice and easy connect it like that disconnect like that two to three seconds to connect and disconnect so moving around to my magic wheel arch again what have i got in my magic wheel arch this time we have detailing spray <laughs> now I, I get asked this a lot now how do i keep the car in good condition so it goes back in the garage the same way it came out in the same condition it came out now one of the things i'm always saying about my car people ask me a lot how does the car stay in such great condition well it's a pain in the ass to be honest um, the way I manage it is by having a policy whereby the car always goes back into the garage exactly the same condition, if not better, slightly better if that's possible, um, than it actually came out of the garage. So this is the detailing product from, from the company called Meguiar's, which is very well known for car products. And it's called, it, the model number is D15501, and it's called D15501 D15501 Detailer Spray. You can buy this in quite a large container, which is a concentrate solution, and you dilute it to one part concentrate to one part water. And I buy also, if you haven't got a good quality spray um, application spray unit, then I've bought this as a Meguiar's Detailer Spray application device as well. So I actually mix it in here. So I fill this 50% with the concentrate and 50% with water, and then just shake it, very, very simple. Now, why do I use a Meguiar's spray unit? Because it's good quality. You can buy cheap units from various different supplies, and if you want to do that, fair enough. Um, but this is a very good quality spray jet. You can adjust the spray jet as well. Um, and it's just a good quality unit. You know, you just don't want to be messing about. You want to get the car back in the garage as quickly as possible. You just want to spray on the car and use the cloth. Now you see there that it's got the bug, the bug, the bug rubbish off the car. From the, from the journeys today, and it's put a nice shine on it as well. It does actually put um, like a layer, of, um, a layer of film over it as well, a protective layer of film. But my regular viewers will know that this car is fully PPF'd anyway. So obviously I'm just spraying on top of the PPF layer and cleaning off the dirt and bugs that, are, that have accrued on top of the PPF layer. So in summary, that's a Meguiar's detailing spray product and the, and the Meguiar's applicator bottle and spray unit. You buy these two separate. The bottle is bought separate to the spray head Again, buy your own spray bottles. You may have your own spray bottles anyway, so there's no need, no need to go to Meguiar's and buy them. This is a high quality unit. Sometimes you can't get both of the items on the Meguiar's website. Sometimes you have to buy them separately. I'm not sponsored by Meguiar's, just Meguiar's a good product. So I use them on my car and I'm just making this as a recommendation to you guys. You don't, I say you don't have to buy the Meguiar spray bottle and, and spray head, just use your own if you want, but this is good quality, robust. And you, know, you don't want to be messing around with bloody inferior products when you're trying to get your car back in the garage. This is just a general, very high quality, soft cloth um, for what's called a polishing cloth. And this is what I use for cleaning the car. And remember, my car is fully PPF, so I'm, not, I'm never touching the car. I'm always applying this to the PPF, and the PPF is self-healing. So if there's any grit or dirt that sort of happens to be on the car, it's not going to scratch the paint. It's going to maybe slightly scratch the PPF, and then as soon as the PPF out is, is out in the sun, it self-heals, so it goes away. Which is why we use self-healing PPF. That's why you pay your thousands of pounds to have the whole car covered in PPF. Pain in the ass to begin with, but it, it does enough save a lot of hassle going forward. But that's not one of the items that I'm recommending now. Next on the list. No, I'm not gonna pick it up for my magic wheel arch. <laughs> it doesn't have everything in it. Is webcam. Now I wasn't going to install a webcam on my 458. I didn't want to go through all that hassle of you know stripping the interior out and fitting it in properly because I can't just fit these these things in by just having wires traipsed all over the place. I have to do it properly. It's just how I am. I just like it being really tidy and like it's factory OEM as best as possible. But we got so much hassle when we bought the car which really surprised us. Um, some people being been very very aggressive in their nature towards the car, um, being very, very um, gesticulative with how they're voicing their opinions against the car, um, that I just wanted to make sure that the car was protected in case somebody happened to take it out on a car, decided to get out of their car and kick my car or something. Who knows why they would do that? Jealousy, whatever it is. But to try and um, overcome any issues um, with that and to obviously be able to claim back, I did put in a webcam. Now this is one of the best quality manu manufacturers for the webcams that you can get. It's called Blackview, and this is a Blackview 900X. 
Now this is the front webcam, it's 4K camera in it. You can do all sorts of, cap you have all sorts of capability with this webcam where you, where you can configure it so you can just touch the end and it actually starts recording. Um, you can configure it so it's recording all the time when you're driving. You can do, do it set it up in all sorts of modes. You can change the, you can reconfigure the sensors on the unit as well. There's all sorts of things you can do. Now, the video is stored on an SD card within the webcam and the webcam will con connect to your Wi-Fi system, uh, which is pretty impressive when it's, when it's at home. So it's a Wi-Fi webcam as well. So when my car is parked in the garage, it automatically connects to my network so that I can access the camera through my, through my uh, mobile phone. So you have a mobile phone app for it as well. It's pretty cool. And the, the, I say the quality is 4K. And if you happen to go out and do some cool driving, you can grab the video from it as well and you can save that video. So you've got some cool footage from that webcam. I haven't actually used any of that footage yet to put in our videos, but it's always a possibility. It's always there. Now the 900X, come, you can buy the 900X with two cameras, um, which is what I did. So it's actually got a front camera and it's got a rear camera. Um, but I haven't found anybody or I haven't got around to creating the bracket yet that fits in here, which is what I am going to do, which will then connect, <clears throat> allow me to connect the rear webcam up. But what you will notice is that down here, I've got the cabling for it. So I've already run the cabling for the rear webcam while I had all the car apart. Um, if you want to see, if you want more information with regards to installation of that webcam, then I've got a full review video on the webcam um, in my channel video. So please check the channel videos and I'll provide a link below. So the next item we're going to talk about is the Spiegel phone mount. I get a lot of requests for how I retain my phone in the car. Um, quite often in, in pretty much in every video where I'm showing the car, people see the phone mounted on some, on some phone mount and they ask me what the phone mount is. So it's actually the Spiegel MagSafe phone mount. If you go to getspiegel.com, you can see it there. And unfortunately you have to import it. So you're likely going to pay import duty on the item. Now it's MagSafe compatible. That means that if you have MagSafe compatible phone, and this is an iPhone, you can just push it onto the unit very easily and that's it. And it charges automatically as well. And it charges at a higher, the highest charge rate for the MagSafe protocol. Now you'll notice that I've got the cable running into the glove box. Now it doesn't actually connect to the USB socket in the glove box. That isn't enough power. You can do it that way, but it doesn't really provide enough power. And what I do is I run the cable through the glove box all the way down and I've routed it all the way underneath the carpet, all alongside the central tunnel. And it comes up here to, um, to a, an item which is provided also by the Get by Get Spiegel, which is the Spiegel dual USB plug. So this is obviously just um, cigarette lighter compatible or normal 12 volt socket compatible. That's pretty much what they call them now. They don't call them cigarette lighter sockets. It's not the done thing uh, to, be, um, to be using that phrase. Um, and that plugs into the cigarette lighter socket or into the, in, into the power outlet socket and provides a higher power output and a higher wattage output to be able to provide capable charging to your MagSafe phone, whether it be an iPhone or an Android product. Again, I'm not sponsored by Spiegel, I'm not sponsored by the Get Spiegel website. Because I'm asked a lot about this item, again, I'm just wrapping this up into the items, which are really good items to buy for the car. It took me an awful lot of time to decide on a, on a capable phone mount for the car because there's just nowhere to put it. And I didn't want to attach anything to the windscreen. Got to remember that we're filming all the time in the car, so we've got GoPros connected inside the car. So I didn't want to have anything that hampered both the webcam and any GoPro that we had in the car. And that was pretty much the, the best design that I could come up with. The cable also is a high quality cable. The cable isn't provided by Spiegel. Um, the cable is a separate item that I purchased, which is a high quality copper cabled lead. Um, so you don't get any dropouts at all, or you get very minimal dropouts in, uh, with, the, with the length of the lead going all the way along the tunnel into the glove box. So the film mount actually connects to the carbon fiber here with some 3M double-sided sticky tape. Now you can buy that um, wherever, you, you can buy that in many places, but it does come with two of the items. It comes one already, already um, it comes one we've already fixed to the base of the unit, but you have a spare one as well. When you mount it, you've got to make sure it's mounted right up as far as you can that way to get as flat a surface as possible. Otherwise it will lift off. This has been on there now for quite a while and there's no problems with it. It does actually swivel in multiple directions as well, but the lead is quite thick to be able to provide, uh, if you're fitting a good quality lead, it's quite thick, so it hampers movement. So I just keep it in that position all the time and then just connect my phone, that's so. And it's, it's really easy, I mean, it charges the phone 
and, and locates it as well, holds the phone and charges it. It couldn't be easier. So when I get in the car, I just have to whack the phone on there. Very simple, and that's it. All done. It's going to charge and it's connected through. And of course, if you've got it, connect, got it connected in the car um, with your connection to the, the infotainment system so that you receive calls through the phone, then that's automatically going to connect via Bluetooth anyway. And I also use a Bluetooth streaming device, the Invery, the Invery item, um, which enables the, the Invery Bluetooth streaming um, plug, um, as you will already have seen from my previous videos, to stream music through the infotainment system on the 458. Now, the next item I'm going to talk to you about is Smart Top, and it's made by a company called Mods for Cars. Now, I created a whole long, um, full length video providing the installation and a full review as well of this unit. So please go to my so please go to my videos to be able to see a full review of this unit and full installation of this unit. Just by my, by way of means of describing what this unit actually does, I'm just going to go through the automated remote approach that it, that is enabled by this unit for the car. The mods for car smart top unit enables you to to um, both operate the roof while you're driving up to certain speeds depending on how you've configured it again more information in my video and to remote control operate your roof now you would think it would be a gimmick to operate your roof by remote but it isn't for me my knees are shot so it makes it it's a lot easier for me to get in and out the car with the roof down so i commonly do this and we only drive the car in good weather anyway so i commonly operate the roof to do that so just again i'm just going to show you um, the remote control the automated operation of the roof by remote control obviously the roof's open at the moment so i'm going to close the roof using the remote control so first of all you have to lock the car then you have to wait around five seconds and then you press the remote control two to three times i think it's three times and then the, the roof will automatically close You can configure it as well, whether or not it closes the windows. I've configured it, I've configured it so it does close the windows because when I put the car back into the garage, I, I then want to leave the car securely in this state with the windows up. I don't want any bugs or anything obviously getting into the car. And it just goes to show as well, you've seen the difference between the spider with the roof down and now you can see it with the roof up. What a stunning, beautiful car in both configurations with both the roof down and the roof up. It's, a, it's a, just a stunningly beautiful car. They got everything right with this car. Ferrari got everything right. As they say, what a thing. And this is why everybody wants a 458. I'll just open the roof as well while we're here. So again, to open it, to, to open the roof, but using a remote control, you press open, as I've already done there. Then you wait your five seconds, and then you press open three times on the remote control. And there you go. Now I've configured I've configured the smart top unit to leave the windows down when I open it because we're commonly going to be driving the car in nice sunny days like today. Um, so we're not going to have to want the windows open. And when we're creating videos, you'll notice that commonly I keep the windows down. So I've set it so it doesn't put the windows up when it opens, when I, when I open the roof with the remote control. So as I said, make sure you catch my full review and installation of the smart top unit that is already in my video selection below. So the last item I'm going to talk to you about is the, is what is an item that I've just recently created a video on and that we've dropped on our channel which is the Forza Componenti exhaust valve controller and this is a remote control for the unit. Again full video installation and review of the unit exists on my channel please catch the video I'll drop it in the, in the I'll drop it in the comments below uh, I'll drop a link to the video in the comments below um, but it's easily available on my channel. I'll just start out and quickly show you this for full details please make sure you check out that video. Now I'm going to, as I showed in my installation video, I'm going to put it into, I'm going to switch the ignition on. I'm going to switch it into valves open mode, which is by pressing the button called B, the button named B. So that it'll start up with the valves open and it will stay with the valves open. The valves will not close on startup. So if you come around to the back of the car, I'll quickly show you the different states 
um, fully exhaust valve controller. So currently the valves are open, I press button B and when I turned the ignition on so it meant that the car would start in what's called cold start mode with the valves open. That would be the normal ECU controlled mode that the valves would be open when you start the car and then about three to four to five seconds after starting it uh, the valves would then close but because I pressed button B it meant it forces it to keep the valves open. So valves are open so when I press the button A it's going to close the valves. Massive difference I'm sure you can agree. So that's the valves closed, that's the valves open. Great device and my recommendation that um, rather than fitting, you know, I, I don't know if I'm going to fit an aftermarket exhaust to this car, maybe, maybe not, I don't know, but certainly you could overcome a lot of the weaknesses that you have with a, the with a standard configuration of the exhaust by using, uh, by installing a Forza valve controller. It just makes it a lot better, it sounds a lot meatier and um, it also brings back a lot of the after and burbles that you get which are hidden with the valves being closed by the standard ECU configuration. Now additional item that I know a lot of you are keen to understand about is an OBD, OBD2 socket reader and in effect that can read the fault codes off the ECU unit and it can um, reset the fault codes as well. Um, obviously this is, this is, these are um, standard equipment that Ferrari dealerships use. I haven't actually got one of those yet, so I'm not going to recommend any models to you. I have a perception of a model that I'm probably going to look into buying, um, but they range from very low cost to high cost, depending on what you want from that unit. I haven't purchased one yet, but I will be purchasing one, so I'll add that into part two. So that's the items I'm going to talk today in part one. There, there will be a part two later on. I don't know when that's going to drop, but there will be a part two in the future after I've purchased those items. Um, and I've got some experience of using, using any additional items that I can then recommend to you. The items that I've already installed, that I've already created videos for, obviously to get full in-depth information on those products, make sure you browse our, our YouTube videos and look at those particular installation and review videos because they'll give you some real explicit technical details on those items. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like. Some great future content to come. Thanks very much for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.